Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm quite used to uh, opening things in railway stations, and uh, just to get to the high point of the speech, there's a whistle or a 20 wagon train goes through. So anyway, welcome to this evening. Um, and it's, excuse me, great pleasure to be here. Um, I suppose I'm sort of responsible for this in that the Romney Hyden Dim Church, I was able to get together a consortium to buy the railway when it was owned by a couple of accountants who were bent on breaking it up. And fortunately, uh, we uh, managed that. And the, and the Romney now from 1973 is in remarkably good order. <laughs> as far as Scotsman is concerned, um, I got involved with her because Alan Pegler, who had taken her to America to make his fortune, uh, uh, was not quite so successful and went personally bankrupt. Uh, the locomotive was in, in the States. Nobody knew what was happening. A few of us got together to try and see if we had something we could do about it. And I said, well, the only thing to do is get George Hinchliff to go to the States to find out what the situation is. He managed the, the two tours. Um, I um, asked George to do it. He said, yeah, if you pay my fare, I'll go. And he rang me up a week later and said, look, if you want to save this locomotive, you better let me know uh, uh, and ring this man in the morning. He said, I've, the attorney had died because a new attorney, but I've spoken to him, I fixed the price and all the rest of it. And I thought to myself, I've got to make an instant decision on this. I have three reasons for not wanting to buy this locomotive. First of all, I have Pendennis Castle with, with John Gretton. There's a total ban on steam running in British Rail and it's in San Francisco. So all good common sense says don't have anything to do with it. But I said to George, if I do buy it, can you get it home? And he said, yes. So I felt really I had no, uh, more, no reason for not doing it. It was a marvelous British icon, much loved by many, many, many people. I had the opportunity to do it and I should do it. So I did. And uh, George did get it home. And last time we smashed a bottle of champagne on it was uh, Lord Marsh, Chamber British Rail, when she was, uh, came out of uh, Derby with a repaint, and he inaugurated her smashing the cup of it. So it's wonderful to, to be here. It's a bit of a lifelong ambition, actually. I've seen this photograph when I was a boy, and um, I, 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 I often thought, we must do this, but we never quite had the opportunity. And it's wonderful to have the opportunity. This small, um, not, a, not really a replica, a small, small version of the, of the design and, um, uh, and, and the, the real thing here. So I'm not going to break this bottle of champagne because it would be a shame. And I don't think health and safety would approve a bit of loose glass all over the place, so I'm going to... And I will pour a little over this locomotive and a little over the other one. Thank <laughs> you.